What's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. It is Threat Gen. It's Wednesday at 11.30 a.m., which means it's time to jump into the Threat Gen Red versus Blue cybersecurity simulation platform and pilot either the red team or the blue team in a re you know realistic environment to see how actually operationally security works um, from a practitioner perspective. It is a blue day. We can be blue or red in the Threat Gen Simulator. Today, we will be operating as a blue teamer. We have a special show for you today in that we will be approaching um, exclusively implementing a cybersecurity program at a uh, manufacturing plant using the Bryce method. Now, we're going to get into this in a second, but the Bryce is not technically a cybersecurity framework in the true sense that we think of like NIST cybersecurity framework or ISO 27001. Bryce is used more for product management, uh, but I was talking to a good friend and colleague, Brandon Poole, the other day, uh, and he mentioned potentially using it as a framework. And what better way to test the efficacy of a possible framework solution than using it in the simulator and see how it actually stacks up against an active adversary trying to attack our manufacturing plant. So we're going to hop into it uh, today. I'm going to first grab Brandon. Obviously, Clint's going to join us as he always does every Wednesday at 1130. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a little primer on what that Bryce method is, and then we'll jump into the simulator and have a good time. So uh, sit back, relax, get ready to have a good time, and let's roll. All right, so welcome uh, to the show. Uh, Clint, as always, you're here. It's good to see you. Brandon, uh, thank you for being a guest, uh, you know, I guess operator, if you will, on the stream today. Appreciate it. No problem. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So let's take a look really quick at the Bryce method before we get in. Um, now, this is the Rice method, which I think is very similar to the Bryce method. Can you just give us like a 50,000-foot overview of what this method is and how we're going to implement it today in the simulator? Yeah, so the Rice methodology is primarily like a product management framework. So, you know, you own a product and you have all these feature requests that your end users want to see. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it can be overwhelming. So how do we you prioritize these different uh, features? So the Rice framework is a framework that helps you kind of figure out what's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck and how to prioritize the feature set. And uh, that's essentially Rice and Bryce all in, you know, a nutshell. Now, the difference between Rice and Bryce mm -hmm. is Rice stands for reach, uh, impact, confidence, effort. Bryce adds that business impact, which is that B on there. So it gives you a way to kind of quantify the score of this stuff and then uh, move forward. And the idea behind this is that in a lot of folks that I've consulted with, you know, you have like a security roadmap. You've got like, you know, 100 different initiatives and how do you figure out what's going to give you the most bang for your buck. And if you think about it, uh, Cybersecurity really is kind of like an internal product. So the, the theory here is that you could use a product management framework to actually prioritize, you know, where do I implement MFA first or what control would I implement first if, you know, they're kind of right there on the same level. Mm -hmm. So what is the scoring methodology that we're going to use for deciding between gateway firewall and security awareness training? Yeah, so it's, it's actually pretty simple to do the calculation. It's just B, which is your business impact, times reach, times confidence, all divided by effort. So the way I usually do it is, you know, business impact, we will do on a scale of like one to four, one to five. Mm -hmm. uh, your reach is going to be kind of in a percentage. So anywhere from, you know, zero to 100%. You know, if you have like a control that, you know, in the case of this game, like EDR, you only install on one uh, individual machine. Of course, it's mm -hmm. going to be ranked lower than something that's going to be across like a whole network segment. Yeah. Uh, impact, what's your expected impact is, once again, like that could be anywhere from, you know, one to three or uh, zero to, you know, 100 percent, however you want to do that. And then confident is how confident are you going to get that outcome? And then you have effort, 
And the way I was thinking about doing that is just how many turns it's going to take. So, you know, obviously. Okay. Or how many people. Once again. Yeah, trying yeah, to get many, more. How many resources or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Let okay. me, like, real quick, can I jump in? I just want to say that uh, one thing I really like about this, and I've never heard of this before, by the way. Um, the First of all, the B. I like the Bryce better than the Rice, uh, from what I hear. And the reason why is because cybersecurity is we we do cybersecurity because of risk to business. We don't I mean, yeah, there's a lot of us out there that are cybersecurity superheroes, and we do it because we want to do the whole classic red versus blue, good versus evil, whatever. But mm -hmm. ultimately, cybersecurity is we do this to minimize cyber risk to the business. That's why I really like this. And the other th I'll close it out by saying that this is a really good method. It sounds like for when you, when you implement your mitigation plan or your POAM or, uh, or those sorts of things is that this is the first time that I've even heard of or seen something that helps you create your actual entire cybersecurity strategy beyond a risk management framework like you know nist um what is it nist at 837 39 those those kind of things uh iso 27005 um so this is something that's really cool i think and, and I'm, I'm hoping it is uh like i said first time i've seen this first time i've been exposed to this um but this is unique i like it yeah, it's going to be cool. And, and, and really, you're bringing up uh, arguably one of the biggest oversights in cybersecurity on the GRC side, which is essentially like if you're going to implement 837, the idea is that you implement all the controls before you authorize the system to operate in a production environment. And that's just completely unrealistic in any, in any setting. So you have to prioritize what controls to put in place because it costs budget, it takes time. Um, and you're not going to wait to go live until you've got everything in place. So like, ha like that, that's the biggest secret about GRC is that you have to prioritize and execute in a staged fashion. So hundred percent agree with you, Clint, that this, this gives you the tools basically to make an informed decision. So I I'm super pumped. Let's, let's get the, um, let's get the portal up and running really quickly here and, uh, let's see where we're at. Okay. So I'm going to go full screen here. Let me just, uh set this up really quickly guys and by the way if for those of you who don't know brandon has been on simply cyber before but he is a seasoned blue team operator so this is right up in his wheelhouse as far as um you know like piloting this and seeing what's gonna what's gonna happen here so let's go full screen let's go let's turn the music on right is that too loud is the music too loud you can yeah. adjust it in the settings uh, okay, actually, Clint, will you handle the music because I'm I'm running my audio through a bunch of different. Um... Well, like I can't do Threadgen music for you, but I can do other music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just do um, yeah. if you can, like your 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 uh, lo-fi or whatever. Okay, so let's get into the sh into the game here. We'll do single player. Uh, we'll play as a blue team. Let's go with the manufacturing plant today. Uh, we've got our win conditions here. Uh, which is eliminate all vulnerabilities, which is an incredibly difficult win condition and is really difficult in reality as well. Like, I, you show me one organization that has zero vulnerability, I will show you a damn liar, <laughs> is, what, is basically the, the deal here. Uh, we will increase threat intelligence score to 100% if we can uh, catch the person. And then outlasting the red team, I feel like, is probably on brand for this uh, Bryce method. So let's get into it. Okay. And by the way, I see you all in chat. Good to see you, Justin. Good to see you, Seba. Jess Ben's in here. Carrie representing um, Bob Bob, as always, here on the stream. So it's great to have you guys with us. Um, you know, feel free to engage in chat. Uh, we're here to have a good time. Okay. So we're, we got our manufacturing plant. Let's look at our actual network diagram. Here you go. Um, Brandon, we've got an AD server over here, which is excellent. We've got uh, some switches and routers. Uh, the internet is here. Kathy is working remote from Starbucks. Very nice. We've got our um, uh, our, our end user workstation network segment and uh, the DMZ engineering workstation over here and our PLCs and HMIs for running our manufacturing plant. So what, what are we doing first? Um, we've got $50,000 and three analysts to work with Brandon. 
All right, so I've got a fancy little spreadsheet over here to do these computations fairly quick. Oh, good. So, Gateway Firewall, I'm assuming that that's going to impact, you know, more than one device. You know, it's going to set yep. your border. So, as far as, like, a reach, let's give that a four. Does that work? Okay. Yeah, that, that's uh, Paul? great. And, and it costs zero. It costs zero uh, resources, too, as far as effort, right? Yeah, well, we'll also take into account, like, turns. So okay, okay. We'll, we'll do resources plus turns. So effort, we'll give it a one. Um, as far as impact, what would you say? Uh, the, I would give it the highest. It's so important. So let's give that a four as well. Okay. And then as far as confidence level, how confident are you that's going to yield the results you want? Um, uh, pretty high confidence. We've, we've so got a good we, firewall engineer working on it. All right, so let's, let's go with like a 90, so 0.9. And mm-hmm. business impact, I mean, this is affecting kind of your, your whole business. Uh, let's go with, what would you say, like a, a two, three, somewhere in the middle? Mm-hmm. Yep, that sounds good. And then very quickly, policy and procedures, uh, what would you say business would be? Um, it, it's important to the business because it sets the tone of like what management thinks. Um, so I, I would give it like not the highest, as high as gateway, but it, it's important to the business for sure. So one, we'll do a yep. four as far as reach. Impact, I, I feel like the impact of this probably is less. So you wanna go with the two. Yep. It does unlock some stuff, but I'm with you. Hey, we have 20 seconds, Brandon. All right, so, so right now we're at firewall gateway. Okay, so let's do that for sure. And then we have two, pe- uh, hold on. Oh, it costs, we have three people. What are we going to do? Oh, we'll do policy and procedures then next. Uh, okay. And then we have, uh, let's do acid inventory. Five, four, yeah. okay. three, Okay. So the turn's going to end, two. but like while, while the red team's taking their turn, let's, let's, let's work on this a little bit, Brandon. Okay. Okay. So we got our perimeter firewall installed. You can see it here on the screen. So we're operating our right. We're working on policies and procedures. So we actually have uh, no all of our resources are allocated. I kind of jumped the gun because of timing on this, but let's take advantage of this real quick, Brandon. With the Bryce method, let, let's actually do network segmentation. So that's two analysts, three turns, $10,000, um, very expensive. So would that be under effort as far as the cost? Like if it has a high Cor- cost? Correct. Okay. So this is an interesting opportunity because network segmentation is really important, but it is super expensive in the scheme of this um, simulation. So I would give it a high effort cost, but I would give it a high impact cost or value. Um, The reach, it's the entire network, so it's got a pretty good reach. Um, I don't think the business would actually care about it or like it, honestly. Usually network segmentation introduces friction (laughs) to a business. Um, right. So yep. we've all encountered that. So, uh, and then confidence, uh, I don't know how to evaluate the confidence on this one. Uh, I mean, you're, you're 100% confident that's going to, you know, cause some kind of harm, right. Mm-hmm. Or slow down the adversary. Um, yes. so I would say somewhere in the high confidence range. So let's just do like a point on. So okay. real quickly doing that, um, as far as effort, I just added turns plus people times the monetary value. Mm-hmm. And we get a 0. .0075. Okay. All right. So, I, like, so it's good. Like, you basically do the work in advance, and then that value is almost static, right? It's not. It's not dynamically going to change based on. Uh, well, it could change a little bit, but for the most part, it's going to be pretty solid. What yeah. about installing a sim? One person, one turn, twenty five hundred bucks, and it unlocks a ton of stuff, including EDR. I think. Yeah, I think the business is like kind of a low level because the business isn't going to really appreciate <laughs> having a sim. Um, the reach is the reach of the sim is pretty good because it's it's like one solution for the entire environment. Uh, Im- so I have a tough time between reach and impact, Brandon. Like does, like identifying yeah. between the two of those. What what how, what's the key differentiator between so reach and impact? Think think of reach kind of like the scope like how much of the environment is this going to affect and the impact is like how much is this going to increase my current level of security Mm. okay so then reach i would i would say is high but impact um 
you know, I, I wouldn't. The thing is, like, installing a SIM doesn't improve your cybersecurity program. It's once you have a SIM, you can actually begin rolling out EDR and, um, you know, pushing logs and stuff like that. So I feel like the SIM itself, like, you could have Splunk and not, you know, pay a lot of money and not get any actual value out of it. Uh, but when you, you when you have a SIM, you have the opportunity to do amazing things. So um, I would give it kind of a lower impact, honestly. Yeah, I, I honestly was thinking about giving an impact of like a three because as you said, like a sim, you're only going to get as much out of it as the quality personnel you have and the types of inputs you're putting into it. Yep. You've got crap logging, the output's going to be crap. Right. So I would do I would do that. And then confidence, I would give it a pretty high confidence rating though because it's definitely going to work. Like we definitely know how to use it here. Okay. Uh, so do the what's the calculation on that now? Zero are 0 0.0108 so that's higher currently than network segmentation correct okay now video surveillance this is one person three turns ten thousand dollars which by the way is very close to network segmentation it costs one more person for network segmentation but everything else from a uh, effort perspective is the same so i would actually give it a little bit lower uh, effort cost than what we did for network segmentation. Uh, with video surveillance, uh, I'm gonna. I think that the business actually would like that because they will see the video surveillance cameras. The you know management's gonna be like, okay, like I see it, I get it. Um, the reach is wide reaching. Uh, impact. I think it has a pretty good impact for uh, protecting from physical security attacks or you know like basically people like clint walking onto the premises and, and and physically doing harm to our environment so i i would give it a pretty high impact value yep i've got it doing kind of like the same impact actually as a sim because in my opinion like not all your threats are going to be necessarily physical sure. so taking that into account i still feel like we we'd have to bump it from like a four to a three as far as confidence, okay. point 0.9. So I've got three, four, three, point 0.9, cost 30,000. So it actually ends up being. No, no the cost is 10,000. Yeah. Well, the, the effort, the effort oh, oh, yes. will be, yeah, just kind okay. of multiplying that across th one times three times 10,000 is 30. So that actually gives us point zero zero one eight. So <laughs> a whole order of magnitude less than. Uh, the sim network segmentation no uh, the sim the okay. sim currently is the sim currently is the winner okay okay that's good so, um we're gonna unlock a bunch of stuff here 2fa ir procedures you got um, five seconds four yeah no that's all right that's all right because all of our yeah. assets are currently allocated oh i didn't so. even realize they're all gone yeah no no this is fine like like basically um now they're unlocked okay and by the way guys like fun fact this is what like being a CISO is, right? It's like doing the work and figuring out up front what your plan is and then executing on the plan. Like installing a, like buying a SIM, installing a SIM, tuning a SIM, like all of that is fine and it's fun and it's technical, but like when to buy the SIM and which SIM to buy and stuff like that, that is the role of kind of the CISO as far as, well, not always the CISO, but making the plan on how you're going to do things that's more of the role of the CISO. all right so we've got our three um resources right now brandon uh we've unlocked this kind of tree right here so now we have two fa ir procedures encrypting network traffic um we have a lot of things here guys we also unlocked um the the asset inventory stuff so vulnerability assessment ics testing um so what do you want to do, Brandon? Do you want to calculate some more or do you want to make a plan? Well, I mean, we've, we've already done some calculations. Mm -hmm. So let's, instead of trying to go through and do, uh, I'll tell you what, we have enough time maybe to do one or two more calculations. Okay. Well, let me just kind of like, let me just, instead of like going through this, like uh, linearly, let me jump to what I think would be valuable from a, you know, kind of CISO perspective, right? So 2FA, I think 2FA is pretty important. Um, so let's do the calculation for that one. It's two people, three turns, $5,000. Um, I would say that the business, 
isn't going to really like it because it introduces friction, unfortunately. Um, right. The reach, the reach, yeah, is the reach, big. the reach is is massive, and the impact is massive. Yes, agree, a hundred percent. So y'all would say like like a four or five for impact and reach somewhere in there. Uh, yeah, I would say like let's say four and a half, right? Can, can you right, can, the, can the Bryce method take fractions? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. I mean, it's it's numeric. Yeah, I mean, you can okay. get as granular as you want. All right, and so four and a half. Four and a half for both. Okay, four and a half, and then con yeah. Okay, all right, and then what? What else, Clint? What do you think would be another great um, control to go for? Security awareness training is always very important. Security. I mean, when you when you combine multi-factor and security awareness training, that gives you massive reach, massive impact over your largest attack vector, which is social engineering uh, and spear phishing and that sort uh, sort of thing. But it also gives you the largest area of um, friction yeah well we got to pick something guys really that quickly one. we have 10 pick that one security awareness training security... okay i'm and obviously a... what... <laughs> i'm obviously a fan of that okay and then i'm like i randomly pick create ir procedures like sorry i i know we're trying to do this the right way but hey at the this simulates time... the CISO. Un... oh looks like clint froze there for a second time um... time frame What was that? That was my cell phone. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I thought ding for saying ass. No, no. Um, so we got one more turn until we free up security awareness training and three turns on IR procedures, which probably did not align with the Bryce method. Um, so network segment, what's our, I guess, uh, Brandon, what's our current, like, um, highest value thing? Like, what? what's the Bryce method tell our us to implement? Yeah, so our current highest uh, value thing as of right now is still the SIM, just by a little bit over 2FA. Okay, so I should have done the SIM instead of the IR procedures. I messed up, but um, let's just really quickly uh, like do some calculations around vulnerability assessment and um, ICS safe testing methods and, and vendor certification because... We have to do safe testing before we do vulnerability assessment, or we run the risk of knocking our own ICS systems down. Let's do the calculation for ICS safe testing because we have to get that in here. It's one person, two turns, zero dollars. Um, love the the price point on this one, by the way. Thank you, um, developers. As far as the business goes, this is a high value for the business. Like, the business does not want production going down so by doing this we assure that we're not going to bring production down um using our tools and techniques so i think that this has a high business value reach i would argue is pretty high because it's for all industrial control systems at our plant um, but how in, how much how much of your environment is industrial control systems that's a great question and a very well uh, fair i would point. say number it, is it is it how much of your environment or is it how much, what percentage of business impact is it? Because while it's probably a third or a quarter of the environment here, okay, maybe a third to, I'm like, that's close to half the environment, but it is 90% of the business impact, if not more. All right. I, we'll go with that, that uh, kind of 90%. So we'll go kind of high. Okay. Okay. What other values are we trying to calculate? uh confidence uh the confidence that this will work pretty high I, I do feel like in the simulator um on the blue side confidence is pretty high on most things because you do it correctly every time it doesn't introduce any type of random variable of like on the attacker side where sometimes you don't you don't hit right so i would give this a high confidence is basically what i'm trying to say as of right now, it is by far the highest one we have on our list. We don't okay. have randomness in this game. It's a variable X factor. I like it. So we have two <laughs> people, $45,000. Um, ICS safe testing method only takes one person, and the SIM takes one, right? So yep. if we do ICS safe testing and SIM, that would be our two highest things per the per our calculations, right? That is correct. Cool. All right. Well, let's let's roll on that. 
All right, let's see. ICS safe testing methods. Boom. All right, so we've got our uh, all of our resources allocated. We still got forty two thousand dollars, so we're sitting pretty. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Jess Bishop and Just Ben. Jess, great to see you in chat. Uh, missed you too. Hope you're doing well. And uh, congratulations on the new job too. Absolute banger. Love it. All right, so let's end the turn here. Yeah, Carl's a random variable. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, we have threat monitoring enabled and IR procedures created, right? So very nice. Uh, nothing like an IR plan to collect some dust. All right, we've got two people, 42 grand. What's our current highest value per the price method? That we've actually calculated? Yes. That would be 2FA. Okay, so 2FA's got a high value. Log collection and analysis. Looks like we've got a new... Uh, what version of this game am we playing right now? Is this 1.10? 1.10. Woo! We are on bleeding edge version of this right now. Love it. So log connection and analysis. Let's look at this one. Is log collection analysis alerts when an asset is compromised. Uh, this is for pushing, it's the same thing uh, as EDR, but for network devices. Yeah, this is this is awesome. Like this is this is an endpoint detection. Well done, uh, dev team. Okay, so let's calculate a couple quick things, uh, Brandon, if you will. Um, let's calculate vulnerability assessment um, since now we can do it safely in our environment. Two people, three turns, $8,500. Um, that's the effort. Um, Clint, there's a question in chat for you really quick while Brandon and I are doing this. Uh, for All the right. business, uh, this unlocks vulnerability, a vulnerability management program. So I think uh, this is good for the business. They're going to like that. We can answer the board's question when they say, how, how secure are we? Or like, how screwed are we? Um, so the business is going to like that. I would give it like middle of the road value for business, Brandon. If okay. You're me. Um, the reach is going to be high because it's all assets in our environment, IT and OT. Um, you know, obviously the uh, the impact. You know, I, I I feel like this has like a kind of like three quarter value impact. Like it's going to be great, but at the same time, it's going to suck because. You know, knowledge is power, and when you see how vulnerable your entire environment is, it, it is it's a little concerning, and uh, you know, makes you want to cry a little bit into your pillow. But um, it is a necessary evil, so I would give it like you know a three out of five if it were me. I was about to say a three out of five is where we went with the seven. I feel like it's in the similar boat. Yep, yep. And then confidence, I would give a high value. All right. Oh, the the question I think is not for me. Um, China asked that. Um, how values are uh, assigned and asked me how values are assigned. I asked uh, which values and China oh, 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 I see. Okay, okay, I understand. Really quick, uh, we'll answer China's question in just a second, but what's the highest value thing right now, Brandon? As of right now, the highest value thing is network segmentation. Assuming we did ICS testing, right? Yep. So yep. I assumed it had a high value because it has a high touch point on it solves a lot of uh, attack surface problems associated with social engineering and things like that. So in order to answer the question of how it's assigned a value, that's a Brandon question. Um, my my assigning saying it, my rating of high was based off my assumption. Yeah. And, and really quick. Um just in, in case you joined us a little late, we are using the Bryce method, which is essentially the same thing as this Rice method right here, except the B stands for business. And we are calculating for every decision we're making on what controls to put in our environment, we're calculating what is the impact of implementing that control, what is our confidence level in successfully implementing it correctly, what is the reach on to the environment, right? So if we implement EDR on one endpoint, that doesn't have as much reach as intrusion detection system on the whole network and then how much does it cost people time money that's the effort value so we're we're trying to um basically remove emotion from the decision making process of how we're rolling out this information security program 
So China, that's where these values are coming from based on those categories. And we're subjectively discussing each of those categories for each of these actions within the environment. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Can someone post that link? I don't have the link to it. If somebody can post the link in chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you talking about... Um, I, I'm whatever. assuming the link to the Bryce method or the Rice method. And yeah. by the way, decisions without emotion are boring. <laughs> yes. All right, there's a link. I just Googled it. I, we don't have any affiliation with product plan or anything like that. Um, I just Googled it. All right, so we have one person. Um, we have one person, 32 grand. Network segmentation is going to take a couple turns. What are we thinking here, um, Brandon? Do we need to calculate some more stuff, or do we have like an obvious uh, uh, option to take in? I mean, network segmentation is pretty high up. The only thing we currently have like another calculation for is vulnerability uh, assessment. Okay. All right. So we have to do a couple calculations here. Um, let's do. What do, you, what do you think, Clint? Either we did video surveillance calculation too, Brandon. I was just about to get up and go oh, get the, me coffee because my dog refuses to get it for me. And then you asked me a question, so I can't go. Yeah. Um, we've done video it. surveillance and we've done vulnerability assessment as far as calculations yep. go. I want to kind of calculate maybe two more things. All right. Give me two more things. In my uh, opinion, wanna... vulnerability, mm -hmm. some sort of vulnerability assessment or vulnerability mapping because you need to start getting visibility um, into your attack surface. That's my yep. opinion. We've already calculated vulnerability assessment. Uh, um, I wasn't listening. Sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, well, let's calculate vulnerability mapping because vulnerability assessment and vulnerability mapping are similar, but vulnerability mapping has a lower effort value or, or yeah, a lower effort value. So let's Clint, you understand vulnerability mapping in the context of the game versus um, yeah, it's it's assessment. it's gonna cost left. It's gonna cost number one. It's gonna cost less. Um, I've got eleven seconds, guys. Really uh, quick. Just what are we doing? Do vulnerability? I would say vulnerability mapping right now, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, so right. I just I selected it. So why the why, why? We choose that? Because even though it has a, uh, a less percentage chance of finding more vulnerabilities. You don't have to do the ICS um, testing methods, so it's less impactful, even though you've probably already done them. Um, yep. It costs less resources, so it's less impactful. There's zero friction, uh, or I would say a very low friction, because it doesn't impact systems or anything like that, because you're doing it completely passively. It's not active vulnerability uh, testing. So you're getting vulnerability, you're getting impact with low friction um, and low impact. Okay. I Hello, like it. sorry. I get, you're getting reach. That's what I guess what I meant to say. It's, it's, it's. I don't understand these terms 100 percent yet. But anyway, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck without friction, but and I guess that's and without negative yeah. impact. We'll have to do vulnerability assessment soon too, though, to unlock this other tree of uh, AV and system hardening and stuff like that. So Let's that's do... a mistake there. You you should be able to unlock that with vulnerability mapping as well. Um, oh. I think that so any type of any type of uh, finding vulnerabilities should unlock everything vulnerability assessment does. Um, I think it works that way in the game. It's just a misinterpretation of the connector lines there. So I'll have to verify. Okay, okay. well, let's do um, I, I feel like I want to do a calculation on endpoint detection. And this is this is interesting because now it's going to it's going to be interesting because EDR on the engineering workstation, to me, has a different impact value than EDR on, you know, like Eric Johnson's Windows workstation up here, or Kathy's laptop. You know what I mean? So let's let's do this. Um, let's calculate EDR. Uh, the value for effort is fixed, right? It's one one five hundred. Uh, the confidence is high. Now. The business, I feel like the business is going to like this in that, well, actually, let's give the business like a middle of the road value because here's a fun fact for people in chat. When you talk to IT and you talk about putting an agent on workstations or on servers, they immediately push back. Oh, this agent, this EDR agent you put on my machine is slowing it down. It's like, I, I haven't even installed it yet, Carl. Like, what are you talking about? You're, you're jumping the gun, okay? 
And putting an agent on in 2022 does not slow your system down. So, you know, take a hike, my friend. But so middle of the road for business, the reach is pretty low because we only touch one endpoint. Um, and the impact, I feel like the impact is going to be the variable per workstation, right? So I would give it a high impact value for the engineering workstation um, and a low value for Eric Johnson's thing. So as far as EDR goes, um, if we can give it a high value for the engineering workstation and some of the other more really sensitive business mission critical systems, that would be, that would be good. Okay, guys. We have gotten a trophy here for hey, I'm be upstairs. Yeah, a good baseline security. We've done network segmentation. We've done vulnerability mapping. So we've got some visibility now. You could see here on the uh, interface that the, the different colored regions and zicates that our network um, segmentation has occurred. And we've also got visibility into our vulnerabilities, which absolutely sucks, especially with no patch currently available for some of these issues. Okay. Where are we with uh, a calculation, Brandon? Yep. So as of right now, endpoint detection is our highest, followed by the uh, video monitoring, followed by the uh, vulnerability uh, assessment. Okay. Now, just putting on your blue hat uh, for a second, Brandon, and looking at some of these actions, where does your where does your uh, you know subjective mind go as far as like a good control? Oh, my subjective mind goes as far as a good control. Yeah, like network, like NIDs or... Um, Honestly, patching all right, system. so NIDs is going to have a further reach because you're going to be able to see more. However, endpoint, you know, as far as the scope, endpoint detection is going to give you a deeper view. So really and truly, I would say that let's kind of cast... Uh, a broad net first, so I kind of go with the log collection and analysis. Mm -hmm. Then you can kind of follow that up on critical systems with uh, EDR. So log collection now, and analysis is an is an endpoint um, control. Well, is it endpoint control on a network device? So NIDs. Oh, oh, oh! I see what you're saying. Well, we can actually install NIDs here. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. So we we we. We can put four network intrusion detection systems in our environment. Basically, one in our uh, IT infrastructure, one in our endpoint, one in our DMZ, and one in our uh, OT. Well, let me ask you this, and you might not know the answer. So is it a detection system or a prevention system? I think, and it's, then a what's... Detection, I think it's a detection system. Okay. I'll, I'll try to figure out what exactly the, the benefit of that over, you know, just doing the log analysis for the network stuff would be. I think I think it captures lateral movement. Okay. Aaron, yeah, Aaron, the Aaron says uh, that we have 15 seconds, so what are we doing? Uh, just do the nids. Okay. And, like, just three of them? Because we, we can do three. Yeah, might as well. All right, let's do nids. Oh shit! Oh, um, you're out of time. Crap! Crap! Yeah. Crap, well, crap! Crap! Well, to go back, like, if you think about it, both of them are detection only. It's just a matter yes. of kind of where you're focusing on, and where you're detecting. Yeah. So I mean, I guess I guess the NIDs would be more vulnerability centric, detecting vulnerabilities, and as you said, kind of the logs would give you more kind of this talking to this. Yeah, well, we can we can roll nids out everywhere right now, so let's do that. And um, gosh, I, like Brandon, I know we we don't play this game very often together, but like nothing nothing irritates me more than leaving resources on the table. I I like I might even lose the game, but if I have like wicked high utilization rate, I love it. It's like it's like how I win. Okay. So let, let's look at um, a couple uh, things while we have a minute here. Um, uh, all right, so let's talk about value here. Harden RDP, that's a, that's a pretty good one. Um, endpoint detection, log collection and analysis. We've installed these NIDs, but I don't think they're doing anything until we actually configure them correctly, right? But, but by the way, 
Like, I don't know how many times you've seen this, Brandon, but for chat, this is a reality. CISOs who don't know what they're doing uh, will often... Yeah, thank you. I, yeah, um, I'm, I'm getting some internal communications. Here, here's the thing. CISOs who don't know what they're doing love buying appliances because it, they can stroke a check. They can then turn to like management and be like, hey, listen, like we've got, you know, intrusion detection system now. An actual person who knows what they're doing knows that you need to actually properly configure these things uh, and, and actually maintain them. So a lot of times CISOs will buy appliances and then not properly staff them, not properly configure them, or the vendor you know, does configuration as part of the onboarding process, but it's like a generic um, configuration, which isn't tailored for your environment. And that's a hot mess um, on fire. No, right, Any th right there with yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's yet another like um, hidden gem of the reality of working in cybersecurity. Well, a perfect Good. example with like these uh, intrusion detection systems is uh, I've actually had this issue in like real life. So uh, there, you know, CISO goes out, manager bun goes out, buys like an IDS, plugs it in, just thinks it's magically works. Like, you know, you just pull down the signatures and it blocks stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't need to train like Bob or Carl, I guess is who you like to blame most of the time. Don't need to yeah, train Carl. Carl. Like, you know, it's just magic. Well, the problem is that a lot of people don't realize that, you know, because you can fragment packets and whatnot, um, you know, there are ways around IDS systems. Now, it's a game of cat and mouse. A lot of your IDS providers now will actually go and try to put them back together. But the way Windows and the way Linux puts them together is completely different. So you actually have to configure the IDS to use first versus last versus, you know, there's five different methods for putting together packets, different operating systems, different device, device styles, put them, puts them together differently. So if you don't train Carl to know this and you actually don't configure it right and your IDS appliance just assumes that, you know, Windows is predominantly out there. So we're just going to default to the Windows method and then you plug it into an ICS environment, which is primarily Linux. Yeah. Or you actually, if there's any kind of like, uh, you know, bypasses there of trying to fragment the packets in a certain way, are you actually going to reconstruct them in the right way to fire that alert? Yeah, and and honestly, you have a false sense of uh, of security, right? Like you, you're like, oh, we have a very mature information security program. We're very secure. In reality, um, it's like a house of cards. Like you don't actually like you have all of the tools there but they're not doing what you think they're doing. So you've actually, you know, kind of a misrepresentation. Um, okay, so what's our highest value uh, action right now? So our highest value action still is the EDR on the engineering workstation, followed by okay. the video cameras, followed by vulnerability assessments for what we need. Okay, okay. Let's do, uh, let's calculate EDR for a few more systems. Right, because I feel like uh, some of the values, like the business, um, you know, the the reach, it's really the impact is that main variable, right? What what did you give the engineering workstation for a reach? I mean, for an F, uh, for an impact value. Uh, I ended up giving it a four. A four. Okay, so Clint, in this environment, what would what else would you give the same level of kind of impact of having uh edr with the engineering workstation like uh like this um this p plc down here i mean or this the ad server oh so you're specifically for your your edr basically you're saying what the same asset rating basically yeah like we we've calculated that the engineering workstation is like super important to get edr on I, I, from a impact value i'm trying to like look at other things like obviously the workstations yeah the any block, work any any workstations that touch uh control systems um historians uh are pretty high on the value and uh, the terminal server if you have one uh you don't have one in this environment um so historians and any anything associated with the process control environment is this pcs database uh, the historian yeah it's a historian oh okay. i got you I, I, I put so basically Two, based on one, what Clint, yeah I used all the assets based on what Clint said um, I was I was doing the Bryce method 
like really quickly, right? As far as the value, like, okay, this is the same calculation as the engineering workstation. Uh, so we've got that secured. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put EDR on this one, um, for this one um, endpoint, right? Are there any other, are there any other assets, Clint, in the environment that have the same kind of impact value of putting EDR on to the engineering workstation. And the reason I ask is because that was our highest value, um, you know, calculation. So like that was where we were. So if there's anything else, I'd like to do it now. I mean, obviously, so I will tell you that in this version that you're playing on right now in the simulation, we've adjusted impact values, uh, production values accordingly to real life. So now, like things like your Active Directory server uh, do have high impact value to the business. Workstations, they vary. Um, your SIM and IDSs are low impact to the business, but high impact to security. So um, it just that that it just really depends on how you want to look at it. Okay, so I guess I would say that the in my mind, the AD server and this DMZ database are the only assets that don't have EDR on it that are comparable to the engineering workstation as yeah. far as like criticality goes. So let's go yeah. ahead and do that. And then that'll complete our, um, these calculations for endpoint detection, um, that, that map to the engineering workstation. Okay. So now Brandon, let us do a little bit more calculation. Now here, here is a confusing thing. Clint, we don't have log collection analysis configured on these NIDS devices. So yeah. Does that mean is that this, <laughs> these NIDS are doing nothing right now? They should. I think we uh, we had a debate on that internally whether the log uh, whether we're supposed to have log collection on them or not. Uh, from, so from a from a that only in the game that only impacts whether or not you detect a compromise. So. And I, I guess we need to update that in the descriptions. Log collection and analysis on NIDs is just about compromise detection. They're still doing their job from a NIDs perspective. Okay. Okay. So then I guess let's calculate log collection and analysis for all of the NIDs devices, right? From the business perspective, um, and we've already made our all actions, so we can let the timer expire. From a business perspective, I think it's um middle of the road right it doesn't hurt the business it doesn't really help the business it's just middle of the road they're not even going to be aware that we did it um the reach is uh i i guess maybe a two of five because we have to touch each one right um the impact will be high because it'll tell us if we have a compromise um which is important um the effort is one turn, one person, $500. But I would almost argue that it's, do it as um, four people, $2,000, and then one, uh, say one turn, because we'll be able to do three of them in one turn, and then we can we can do the last one on the second turn. So, so maybe calculate it as like 1.3 uh, turns, Brandon. All right. And then high, co high confidence level. So how, how does how does law collection and analysis on our NIDs stack up in our in our what what decision to make? So it edges out, believe it or not, both the cameras and cameras and the vulnerability assessment. Interesting. At okay. a point zero zero three one compared to the point zero zero one. 08 of the video assessments and point zero 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 eight eight of uh all right well then i guess let's do that um and i'll i'll use my end user environment last the corporate environment which honestly is you know it's kind of funny the corporate and end user environment is most likely the one to get compromised but it's the one i do last because the level of criticality is lower so, you know, I, yeah, that's just interesting to me that like, that's not where I go first, even though I know it's the most likely to get compromised, but it's the least important one. 
uh, in the grand scheme of things. See, I think I'm, I'm actually the opposite. That's like the first yeah. place I would go. Be- because it's most likely to get compromised? Uh, yeah. So, like, uh, you know, if you it, it's kind of like if you have like a a boat that's sinking with multiple holes, it makes more sense to patch the biggest vector or the biggest hole first so you can kind of control the volume of water coming in. So which, which one are you talking re- about? I missed it. So, like, basically, I have to prioritize. Uh, yeah, we're prioritizing. There's four nids, but I had three people, so I had to pick one of the four nids not to do this turn. And I was telling Brandon, even though I know that the corporate environment is the most likely to get compromised because Carl operates in this environment, I I do the nids in all the other environments first because the criticality of the assets in those environments are too important, and the end yeah. user workstation environments less important. But it's it's funny because that's the one that's most likely to get compromised. Yeah. And, and well, Brandon was saying he's the opposite. Well, this is a, this, this comes down to the, ri- which risk analysis formula you're using, right? Because ultimately your risk is going to be impacted by your attack surface, but also the criticality um, or severity of the impact or, or of, of, of a compromise. So you, you know, if you have a broad attack surface, um, then that would increase your risk. But if the impact of that area is low, it decreases your risk. And then if you have mitigating other mitigating factors like network segmentation, it decreases your risk even further. So I'm I'm with you and or whoever said it in that I would not focus on the workstation zone as much at first because that is a low risk area, even though it's a large attack surface. Yeah. And so two things. One, Jarrett in chat said that he would do the DMZ last. And ac- actually, I agree with that. Like thinking about it now, I would have done DMZ last, not the corporate one. Um, but I also want to point out that like it, it's such it's such an on-brand blue teamer response to go right after the most likely to get compromised environment. And it's such a GRC response to be like, based on uh asset uh, priority to the business see, so I, I, see, I find that interesting yeah well see this is this is where i think like models like your fair framework gets really interesting because like you know as far as like a tax surface you also have to think about contact frequency so the impact's lower but the contact frequency once again in those two areas dmz is always exposed so mm-hmm. you know knocking out a vulnerability with a huge contact frequency because yes. you know it's got a nap to the internet you said said fair yeah i'm a huge fan of the fair methodology and when it comes to risk analysis that's awesome yeah i mean that would that'd be like you know i would almost argue that's kind of like a competitor to using the bryce framework but that that does require a lot fair is fair is specific to risk whereas bryce is not yeah i think well uh, Fair, like, fair gives you well, essentially what you're trying to do is prioritizing stuff. Risk gives you way yeah, of prioritizing yeah. things in business dollars as opposed to kind of funny money like a three yeah. to four when you can actually come back and says you know there is a sixty percent chance that this is going to happen. The average value is going to be fifty thousand dollars when it does happen. On the low end, it's ten, and on the high end, it's one point three. And the chances of it being over, you know, two hundred and fifty thousand is, you know, ten percent. That's what well, to be is. to be fair, it's all about risk. Oh, I see what you did oh. there. Is there a rim shot um, sound effect <laughs> we can play right now? Boom-ish. Dude, I, I I do love it though. Um, I didn't realize you you knew about fair, Clint. Um, I know about everything. You, you know this already. And that you like it. I know, but you're an ICS pen tester. Dude, I am all, I am, I'm a, I am a risk nerd above all else. And I am, I love me some, you know, advanced analytical calculus and, you know, yeah, variable change say, analysis. And... So, so you might find this interesting, uh, Jerry, is I actually met a guy a couple of years ago. And their pen testers actually work with someone from their consulting practice to actually use fair analysis to rank the pen test results. Like this vulnerability or this issue has the greatest amount of business risk or impact in a dollar amount. And that instead of high, medium, low or red, yellow, green, they're actually able to say, hey, based off the 
business systems that impacts the scope, all this stuff. This is the dollar amount and likelihood that we assign this like finding. Yeah, that is said, an interesting way to like take advantage of the model. Yeah. And and he said like people just gobbled it up, just loved it. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, it, it, it's definitely way more uh, objective, right? I mean, it, there's still some subjectivity, but it's way more objective than high, medium, low, or like a heat map or anything like that, right? So yeah, I, th um, I think on the flip side, it's just the amount of effort you have to put into doing that assessment and getting that things in order to prioritize. So like that was kind of what he said was drawback is because it's more resource intensive, it does cost a lot more for pen tests. But usually what happens is, you know, a lot of firms will, you know, do a pen test a year, rotate between, you know, three firms, and they just do that every three years to kind of see where they are. Yeah, no, it, it's, you, you know, you, you pay for what you get, basically. Yeah. Um, so real quick, we do have what looks like a, you know, heat rash going on over here. Clint, um, what, what does this indicate? Does this mean that something's it, been detected? It means that that device... Uh, has been attacked it does not mean it has necessarily been compromised or that the attack was successful but that does indicate that you have detected an attack on that device okay so thank you nids you know, so absent of doing the calculation uh i'm going to just prioritize that we do these two things these are the two things that we can do on the endpoint um one change the default creds which is <clears throat> makes me outrageously angry i know that this is a simulator and that this is this is a game but like default creds on your gateway firewall is like the most like resume generating event ever like you should be fired instantly if you have default creds on your gateway firewall that is so dumb well so you know we we do increase the uh default credentials vulnerabilities frequency um on the games that you play stop it no you don't <laughs> stop. i swear to god i i swear Epic to god troll. like oh we lost we lost the resource um brandon i don't know if you've been following i play this game every wednesday with clint um kind of commentating and engaging um and i'm i swear to god that it knows when i'm logged in because i will be standing add an HMI and I'll take like six turns in a row to destroy it. And I don't like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. And then I get arrested. Like, I swear, like whatever. I, I, I probably shouldn't poke the lead developer, but I I'm not the lead developer. I'm just a lead designer. No, no, no. I was calling Aaron out. Oh, oh, I didn't hear you. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So this machine has got a skull on it, which indicates like not a good situation. Uh, we, we do have to activate IR. Um, one thing that's unique to this particular, holy sh what is going on up here? Hold on. We've got, we've got multiple problems, y'all. Um, hold on. Oh, crap. Um, geez. all right. So we're going to activate IR, which takes a full turn. Um, but we can do, we can do three things that take one turn right now. So, um, Brandon, is there anything that we have? Um, ranked high, that is a one turn thing. Mm. Mm. Maybe, nah, it doesn't look like it. Not that we've calculated anything out. All right, well, we can enforce strong passwords. That's just a good idea because, um, uh, as Clint just mentioned, default creds, weak passwords. That That's like a wide reaching, um, control to implement because like basically no one anywhere will be doing it implement strong wi-fi has a wide reach and is one is one turn uh and then let us do we do anything to the engineering workstation no and then okay hold on um i'm gonna put log collection and analysis on this machine right here just because you know obviously this terminal servers um this terminal server is owned right now so i'm trying to like basically put a perimeter around it but we're about to enter ir which i think all the calculations go out the window at that point let's see what happens oh jesus christ okay um, oh yeah wow so we wait just what did they get this, did they get how did they get that go back to damaged hmi 
Where's the results? And how did they get that? That must have been on site. They were. Oh, they got the engineering workstation. They got the engineering so, work. No, the engineering like workstation was my proxy. Hold on. Let's see what they did here. This is the. Uh, this is their thing. They did OSINT, physical recron. Uh, they recruited some hackers. They did spear phishing. Uh, they scanned from the internet. They found the gateway firewall. It looks like they enumerated uh, services on the gateway firewall. They upgraded server. their rig. Um, they, they hit. The that's what happened. Fire... They hit your terminal server. They hit your terminal server. Server and the terminal server wasn't secured uh, against uh, and got proxy access to the engineering workstation, which then gave you secondary proxy uh, access to all the PLCs. So interesting. So even though we had the engineering workstation secured, um, like we had hardened it a little bit, it still had a bunch of vulnerabilities uh, that we didn't know about. It got compromised. So so this is, yeah, gosh dang. It's, it's interesting. Uh, it's unfortunate, obviously. But Clint, looking at this, God. Okay, so here's here's the disposition from my perspective. Okay, guys, here's what I'm thinking from this perspective. Let me move this. Okay, I think the Bryce method uh, could be interesting, could be useful, but I feel like you almost have to calculate all of the things before you even begin, right? Yeah. So that's, so that's number you one. need you need to have you need to have a risk analysis calculation done you have to already i would say that the you know I'll, I'll say this and then i'll just turn it over to, to, to brandon but in my opinion from what i can tell a true risk assessment or risk analysis framework helps you prioritize your risk bryce helps you prioritize your mitigation strategy and it should be based off of the risk analysis correct the idea is you could use Bryce in tandem with another framework to kind of prioritize the controls. Yeah. yeah. Now, that being said, trying to compute this stuff out, you know, live, we lost, I don't know how many resources because we just. Well, right here, uh, utilization 94%. Not terrible, not, but not, not perfect. Terrible. And we may, we may have, um, we were choosing our highest value one based on the population of ones that we had calculated. So there may have been a higher value control that we just didn't do the calculation on. So that, that's a lesson learned. Um, so guys, what do you think about the Bryce method as far as a framework goes? Clint? Yeah, I mean, like I said, um, I, I think it works great um, as a risk mitigation prioritization tool because I, I think that's where it should be used. Um, but it, it, again, it's not a, it's not a risk assessment or a risk analysis, uh, risk prioritization tool substitute. I, I agree with Brandon. It should be used in tandem with another risk prioritization method. Yeah, hundred percent. So we definitely tested it today. We definitely saw the limitations of it. I mean, basically this threat actor just walked right in, uh, and pwned us. I, w I do wonder, though, if we could have prevented this, right? So they got through, um, if I'm not mistaken, they got through from spear phishing, correct? Terminal server? So how did Even they with two-factor? I, I guess, man. Like, they then had... Basically, they were very skilled in technical social engineering, apparently, then. You would uh, look and see if they researched technical engineering. Um, if not, it was a really lucky strike. And we did not harden the RDP on the terminal server. We have a terminal server. We didn't harden the terminal server. The terminal server is there, especially in industrial environments, specifically to give remote access to the process control network. And it's supposed to be in a safer method. But if it's not hardened, it's just another attack surface. Yeah, and it doesn't even look like they did any research. So it was um... a lucky strike. So, so this is this is what I'm saying, okay? This active adversary, no research, pops the terminal server and basically just laterally moves into an, um, a PLC and blows it up or an HMI. Meanwhile, this guy researches the crap out of it, 
gets right in front of an HMI and takes six turns and is unsuccessful in all six turns. I'm calling shenanigans. All right. So this you caught, this them. Been- you caught them. They just love making you flustered. Just like ah! I, I swear to God, I think I I do think that there is something about it because they know I'm going to play this game at 11:30 on Wednesdays. They know what's there going on. There is now. You keep harping on it though. You're going to get it, but there is nothing specific to Jerry is playing. All right. If well, there was, then, you would know it. Trust me. Well, then I just have bad. We'd luck. be more but overt you know about it. That that is um, not uh, unlike real life either. By the way, though, it's it's sometimes you know it's just bad luck, right? A lot of threat actors will uh, spray and pray and find out you know like when something calls back into their C two infrastructure, that's when they find out who they've actually compromised, right? So you know sometimes it's just bad luck and it just sucks. So. It can happen uh, anytime. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Any, uh, well, special thanks to Brandon Poole. Brandon, thanks for coming on the stream. Thanks for introducing us to the Bryce method and allowing us to kind of test it, uh, you know, in the simulator and see how it worked. It, it, did, it was not successful today, um, but I think that we identified that it really isn't a framework. It's much more of a tool to help implement a, a framework, right, in a prioritized uh, way so definitely definitely uh, enjoyed that hopefully you guys got value out of the stream obviously um you know hit the like share it um if if you did get value uh, we will be here every wednesday at 11 30 next week will be a red team playthrough so today we were blue next week it'll be red uh we may be uh simulating some type of advanced persistent threat we've done wizard spider uh in the past i think um Actually, we are doing it. Next week, we're doing um, the, the Russian one. W- w- what's the and f- fuzzy bear or, or sandworm? We're doing sandworm. We just did sandworm. Did we? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. So, well, Lynn, I guess. Are you, are, are you? When are you doing? Is that the rematch with Eric Taylor? When are you doing your rematch with Eric Taylor? He's blue team. He could, he could go against you on that one. I'll see if he's available. Yeah. So next week, live heads, heads up battle. Me versus Eric. If Eric's game for it. I, I did lose to him, which sucked um, pretty yeah. badly. He is traveling um, I, right now, we know, uh, for work. So it just depends mm-hmm. on, I, I saw that LinkedIn post. So it just depends on if he's available. Yeah, yeah. well, I'll still try to target uh, some type of heads up. Let's play uh, for next week. Maybe I'll maybe I'll take Brandon on. Brandon, you, you available next week, possibly? I'm possibly. I just don't know if you want that snack down. I don't know if you can handle like two oh losses my God, in a row. This guy. This guy. I'll, I'll come at your HMI like a spider monkey. All right. You're all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's going to do it. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. Thank you, Clint. Thank you, Brandon. Y'all uh, be good. If you want more information, go to threatgen.com. That's the simulator that we were playing. It's red versus blue. There's a ton of, um, you know, the simulators there, obviously, but there's also a ton of like educational content and some other uh, aspects around the entire threat gen platform so go check it out if it's if it's your speed that's awesome if not at least come back next wednesday for the live play all right everybody thanks so much and we'll see you next time